Good morning, this is the Eager Beaver Show. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, The Misfy Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters, CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community, and The Peppermaster, hot pepper sauces made from farm-fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. Well, good morning and hello kids and welcome to season three and episode number 301 of the Daily Beaver Morning Show here on the Cryer Media Network. Shadoop, 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 yeah. Little Motown today. (laughs) (laughs) I'm your host. The Eager Beaver pronouns he, him, hey, Mr. Beaver, hey. And with me, as always, is my good friend, Mr. Grizzly. Uh, it's going to be a lovely day here at the Beaver Lodge. At least I hope so. And we have a little nipple for you. But before we do anything else, let's do the most important thing that we do here at the Beaver Lodge. And that is say hello to you, sir, Mr. Grizzly, and ask you how your mental health is doing today. Well, good morning, Mr. Beaver. My my. Took is a little scronkly this morning. I can't seem to get it right, so it's under my skin. That's the ADHD in me. Uh, mental health-wise, a um, little bit better than yesterday. Uh, admittedly, when I first woke up, I had all the feelings of dread and despair and emptiness and loneliness and all of the things that depression gives you. But then I got out of bed and took a shower and made a cup of coffee and sat down and started to write. And Lo and behold, I started to feel a little bit better. So, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, I'm going to roll with that. Okay. Feeling better. Good, good. Good, good. We like that. Each day is a new day and, and, you know, one step in front of, one foot in front of the other. It's, it's incremental, incremental increase in incremental improvement. That's the word I was looking for. Incremental improvement. So yeah, yesterday, today's better than yesterday. Tomorrow will be better than today. And all we can do is to continue marching forward. Mm-hmm. I'm feeling better today, too. I actually good. had a surprisingly good day yesterday, considering I felt like crap. Um, curling team won the match. We oh, won nice. Seven in a row, and we're going up a division in my senior men's team. And my rehearsal yesterday evening, which I thought was going to be a disaster because it was uh, for uh, our Shakespeare, as you like it, and it's the, the one scene where I have lines. <laughs> <laughs> and the one that we're doing and i hadn't had a chance to look at it at all and my plan was to go in with the lines memorized so i could not have the book in my hand my hands free to actually act and that did not happen so i thought for sure that the dis- director is going to be very disappointed but apparently he was very happy with the work that we did and what we came up with oh, great. So i'm going to take that as a win and i'm going to run and i'm not going to let anybody know because it's just you and us kids and nobody else is watching <laughs> and i was not prepared <clears throat> at all like at all like i left for the match which started at 11 15 and got back home went to do some groceries on the way back home Got back in at 4.30, and rehearsal was supposed to be at 6.30 normally, but it got moved up to 6. So I basically came home, had time to make a can of pea soup, and I was out the door again. Oh, my. Yeah. I thought for sure it was going to fall flat on my face at some point. Um, But it worked out, and then I came home, and then I uh, 
spent an hour talking with my sweetie, and then I just went to bed in this room. Oh, <laughs> slept in the studio, did you? I slept in the studio last night. He goes, well, why aren't you going to listen? You're staying up late to finish that paper you're writing because your publication, well, your submission deadline is today. Oh. So you're going to be up late pulling close to an all-nighter or whatever, and then you're going to come into bed and say, no, no, I'm, I'm sleeping tonight. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> uh, well. Um, all right. Good morning to our kits who have joined us here this morning. We have Kit P and C Bio, Kit Elaine, Kit Cassie, Kit Dan, Kit Linda M, Kit Miss Sadika. Shadika. Shadika. Wah! I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it, Miss Shadika. Uh, and Mateo says, good morning to you all. Good morning, Mateo. How are you, my friend? Hey, brother. I hope you're feeling better. I know that you've had, you haven't been feeling your best lately. So I'm giving you big, 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 big hugs and hope that it has lots of healing Shadika. energy for you. There we go. Yeah, Shadika. I, 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 I Shadika. Will, I will go. get it. I, know. I will get it. The, the, I, have to, I have to replay it to myself frequently in order for me to remember to say it correctly. So. Yes. Because so I, I, I'm looking at the name and the S. The H isn't there, so that's yeah. where I'm screwing up. But I will remember. Eventually, I retain. Uh, good morning, Kit Lefty Lance. Lovely to see you on the chat today. Good morning, Kit Sean. How you doing? Nice to see you, too. Who else do we have? Uh, Kit Kendra. Hey. So nice to see you among us. And I'm sure I'm probably missing somebody. Kit Cassie. I see Kit Bruce Mabuhe, my friend. And... Kit Vim, yes, always a joy to see your face on the chat. I know that Kit Hugh was here a little earlier, but he's on the road to Belleville, so uh. in spirit. And Kit James, hello, my good friend. And if I missed anybody, I am sorry. I'm just scrolling through the chats here. Um, Lots of news, lots of news. Um, The most obvious one is what's happened at... Uh, um, Pierre Trump's mm -hmm. rally. Yeah. Uh, he's just completely leading into the Trumpishness. Um, then we have, of course, U.S. primaries going on. Uh, Iowa took place the other day, and New Hampshire is tonight, and there's some strike action, and there's a new vaccine against malaria. And oh. Lots of stuff going on. Oh, yeah, yeah. Lots of stuff going on. I didn't know but, about that. That's a good yeah. one because malaria kills more people in Africa than anything else yes so we'll try to touch on all those things but let's start with our very own maple trump um yeah. he is not trying in any way as far as i can see to shake that label which was kind of interesting because doug ford when everybody was comparing him uh, to trump he would just like no 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 rejecting that even though he really is since then, at least, it seemed to have dived into the I'm a Republican, I'm from the great state of Etobicoke, and all that kind of stuff. Um, but with uh, Pierre, it just seems that Canada's most inauthentic man is also a man with absolutely no original ideas of his own and pretty much anything that comes out of his mouth has been stolen from somewhere else or someone who did it first. Oh, yes. Uh, which is very, very disturbing. Uh, I'm sure you probably have the clip, Mr. Grizzly. I'm, I'm trying to bring it up here and I just realized I'm using two different browsers. Give me a sec. Oh, okay. I can probably... Idiot. Uh... <laughs> You're not an idiot. Oh, hang on. Uh, but, um, yeah, there was a rally. Yes, well, a rally. He calls yeah. it a town hall. It's not a town hall. It was a rally. This one was a rally. And remember when uh, Donald Trump had that rally and someone seemed to have been getting beaten up? And Trump, well, Trump was like, ah, get him out of here. Get him out, out, out. And then 
promising that he'd pay people's legal bills mm -hmm. and that type of stuff. Um, I have the clip here now. You have the clip? All right. This is in Port Coquitlam, uh, British Columbia, just uh, a couple of days ago. I'm not sure the date of this. Watch what happens. <laughs> Oh, that's the creepy view. Mm -hmm. I'll show the thing in a minute. The liberals are getting desperate today, aren't they? They're very desperate. Justin Trudeau has tried to shut down Canadians, but he won't silence our voices, will he? Okay, now. Okay, now you notice all the crowd looks like the Trump crowd in back, all one pretty much monochrome, all got their signs mm -hmm. like this, and you know it's blacks for Trump, mm -hmm. like often held by a white guy, uh, almost and always, almost always, but uh, but you know where all those Trumps, uh, all the all the MAGA Trumps and Trump twenty twenty or twenty twenty four signs him, it's all the common sense signs, and you see he's loving that right mm -hmm. that moment. He was happy and cheerful, reveling in it, a big smile. Practically now, dancing. Now watch what was happening. Watch what was happening. Yeah, free speech. Free speech. Bastion of free speech. Bastion of freedom of expression, except they're different things, as I highlighted in our little write-up there. But the one lone person in that um, hate rally, protesting. Purity rally. The one guy, uh, they rough him up to get him out of there because they don't like what he has to say. And let's go back to the tape, shall we? Let's go back to the tape. So that's what happened when Pierre Polyev stood on stage and practically danced gleefully right here. <laughs> the liberals are getting desperate today, aren't they? They're very desperate. Justin Trudeau has tried to shut down Canadians, but he won't silence our voices, will he? But not only will we ax the tax, not only will we ax the carbon tax, that's right, not only will it be my first act, So apparently uh, a liberal and apparently Justin Trudeau sent him. Yes. We know none of that. We know none we of that. Know, we don't know uh, who this man supports politically. Word on the tweet, word on the tweet, we have no confirmation, is that he was a Palestinian supporter. Mm. Word on the tweet. Okay. But apparently it's Justin Trudeau's, uh, you know. Well, cons yeah. but considering that you know how in the bag pp has gone i mean he's shown no moderation he's picked one side and one side only here mm -hmm. oh yeah anybody who's canadian who's of any muslim or arab heritage yeah, you're on uh, i do not see how you could be handing your vote to this man mm -hmm. he has offered no balance whatsoever there's one dissenting voice there, and what did they do? They roughed him up and threw him out. But free speech. Now, as you know, we like here at the Beaver Lodge when we sometimes make a point to focus on juxtaposition. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I think Mr. Gal is exactly going, went exactly where we're going. He writes, how did Trudeau handle his rally hecklers? Mr. Well, Grizzly. Let's just have a look at that, shall we? If you will. Let's compare and contrast. Stop shouting, you could stay. 
If you, will you stop shouting, sir? Then you won't be disturbing everyone here? Guess not. Okay. Uh, have, have a lovely evening, sir. Uh, thank you for coming out in this exercise. Stop shouting. You could stay. If you. Rather large difference there, don't you think? Uh, and the, look at the crowd. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're not cheering it on. They're not going, yeah, yeah, get him. They're not kicking. They're not engaging. They're not yelling, get him out, get him out. No, he's not ginning them up with rage. The difference is night and day. Which person do you want to be leading this country? Which person do you want when we have to talk to individuals that we know are, 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 are trying to do bad things to us, like Modi, for example? We know he's done bad things on our soil. We know this. This has been proven. But hasn't hasn't Modi done something to influence the election of conservatives? We'll talk about that at another time. Let's talk about that at another time, shall we? I am... I just... I don't know what to say to that. Mm -hmm. Like this is, I hate these expressions like this is not Canada or this is not who we are because it is who we are. clearly it this happened. is who some of us are. Yeah, it happened. But this is not what we're supposed to be. This is not what we aspire to be. This is not what we advertise ourselves as being as. It is not the Canadian spirit, which we talked about a few days ago when we showed that picture of the Muslim leader and the Jewish leader together mm -hmm. at a table with the Prime Minister at a meeting organized by Vancouver Granville MP, um, oh, Nur Mohammed, Talib Nur Mohammed, I think. Mm -hmm. But, um, this is not it. And Kid James goes, I don't think many believe that Trudeau literally sent a protest. Of course it doesn't. Of course it doesn't. But the point is that he needed the clip of him saying it yes. so that it could go out to his believers who do believe that, the ones who do believe that Trudeau almost personally set the fires. Yeah, that's the other one, right? And he said that in the House of Commons. You can't look at these things and say, well, well, I don't think many believe that. That's not the point. It's not the many. It's not the people mm -hmm. who look at that and roll their eyes. Go, well, I can't possibly. It's the people that do believe it. Yes. They're the, the people that are likely to show up at rallies or at a Trudeau bus as he's getting off the bus and starts throwing rocks. Mm -hmm. And that's where the problem lies, right? They're the ones that like want to show up at the governor general's residence or at the prime minister's residence with a truckload of guns just to have a friendly conversation. They're the ones that show up at Parliament Hills with nooses. And Nazi flags. And someone hung an effigy. Yeah. It's like, these these are not nothing burgers. Well, and then when, when we... These are not things to look at, roll our eyes and dismiss. These are things to take very, 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 very seriously. And when we cry out about it, and say this is wrong, this should not be done, immediately they say, oh, the tolerant left. Need I remind everyone about how we do not tolerate intolerance? Yes, we are tolerant until you are intolerant of others. Karl Popper said it best. Hell of a way to start the Tuesday, eh? Yep. So we have a um, situation here, Mr. Grizzly, where this is what's going on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The only mask PP will ever wear. For those of you who are listening, are listening on the audio-only version, it is a cartoon, a political cartoon, of Pierre Polyev holding up a, a mask of Donald Trump, the only mask he'll ever wear. 
as in he won't wear an N95 mask during a health scare, a global pandemic. But he will wear one of Donald Trump because that's who he wants to be. He, I love how, what was it recently when he said, uh, mind your own damn business party, and he went on about how Justin Trudeau is an authoritarian dictator. Mm-hmm. Yet, <laughs> pot meet kettle. <laughs> Pol pot meet kettle. Pol pot meet kettle. It's just, oh, you, I can't write this. Mm. Uh, uh, Kid James, um, I, I honestly, honestly, I was not impersonating you. <laughs> just, I was just, that's just my voice today. <laughs> well, and, and what James is saying here, just, just my opinion, I think 99% of those who saw Pierre Polyev knew that was snark. And yes. I would like to hope so too. However, here's the concern. It only takes one friendly sausage maker with a truck full of guns. But it's not the fact, it's, this is not a question of discernment. Of course, probably 99% thought that it was snark. And you know, like, clearly it was. Mm-hmm. Clearly, like, even we detect that. Like, the point is, is that it's snark that feeds the machine. That's the problem. And it's not statesmanship. No, that situation did not call for snark. I am very flattered, Kid James, <laughs> by your new porn name. <laughs> I don't care. Speak well of me, speak ill of me. Just make sure you spell my name right. Yes. <laughs> just, just spell my name right. C O N N O R, <laughs> not E. <laughs> no O apostrophe to start with. <laughs> and S, because there's plural. There's more of more than one. Of yeah. <laughs> it's amazing, though. Actually, my last name, especially because I grew up in Ottawa. Mm-hmm. Almost every time I say my last name, people go, oh, "Okay, Douglas O'Connor." Because yes, of, the of course, you know, <laughs> you to go to the O'Connor route, yeah. or then, or because of the TV show, The Connors. Mm-hmm. Like this, they write it ERS, and it's like the most famous Connors on the planet is Jimmy Connors, the tennis player. It's spelled the exact same way, yeah. but apparently, my last name is the least common. Of well, them. Jimmy Connors has kind of been out of the spotlight for a little while, so yeah, you yeah. could see that. But uh, if you're of a certain age, it makes perfect sense, right? Yeah. Ah, you can't spell Douglas Connors without O, O. And even O. <laughs> I got three of them if you use both names. O, O, O. You are so, so cheeky. Um, I love you, cheeky people. Cheeky people can sit at my table. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, not too impressed with that. But hey, let's see if he's asked by, about that by a female journalist over the next couple of days and how he reacts. Hmm? Yeah, that should be uh, curious, eh? Ah, uh, this guy. He, like I said, the day he went to that apple orchard was the day that he completely jettisoned the fake over. And just decided, you know what? I'm a dick. That's probably the only thing authentic about me. I'm going to lean into the dickishness. Mm-hmm. And he's just going for it. I'm hoping, it is my hope, that he cannot sustain this for two years. I don't think he can. And that honestly. people start to get tired of his crap and tired to get start to get tired of his act. But we won't know that. We won't know that for a while yet. Because right now, um, it seems that the base is really eating it up. Which is kind of... It's kind of concerning to me. It really is kind of concerning. I don't like where this is going. No, um, it's not good. No. Now, we have another thing that happened here uh, over the last couple of days. If you'll uh, put this up here. Happy to, sir. Mr. Grizzly, uh, this was from a Thunder Bay Ads account. There's an article 
by Lorraine Car Carpenter in Quebec that has uh, surfaced. And uh, it has a quote from the Bloc Québécois leader, Yves-François Blanchet, for whom I don't have much love personally, but that's a personal issue. We've had a couple of encounters where the leader has been rather racist. Um, but one thing about uh, the Bloc Québécois leader is that um, even though he's usually quite pompous, uh, he has this thing where um, he speaks for Quebec. And on the political scene, he likes to throw haymakers with a bit of a, you are not going to tell us how we're going to do stuff in Quebec. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you how we're doing stuff in Quebec. Well, it seems that Pierre, who we mentioned, went on to the radio stations and said that, uh, well, Yves-François Blanchet has basically abandoned Quebecers and the Bloc have abandoned Quebecers. And this is on the same weekend, of course, that he said that Montreal Mayor Valérie Plante and Quebec City Mayor Bruno Marchand were incompetent. Mm -hmm. Well, according <laughs> to this article, uh, Blanchet did not mince words in response to conservative leaders' harsh criticism of him on Quebec radio. Yves-François Blanchet responded yesterday to Pierre Polyev's harsh criticism when asked what he has to say to Bloc supporters. The conservative party leader said that Blanchet had abandoned them and essentially supports every move that the liberal government makes. We know that that's not true. Blanchard did not mince words in his reaction. Quote, Pierre Polyev has no respect for the truth, for anything, and it's going to catch up with him. I will make it my business. Quebecers are well aware that he does not speak and will never speak for us. Now, I like this in the sense because on this particular issue, this particular issue, Blanchard pardon my language, on the Tuesday morning, literally has no fucks to give. Yeah. Yeah, he doesn't. He doesn't care. Doesn't. No. And when Pierre went the whole separatist route and started calling it Le Bloc Libéral. Yeah. Um, Talk about ginning up. Like Blanche has a bit of a pride thing. Mm -hmm. If you come after his nationalism, uh, he's going to punch back hard. Well, and I can he's appreciate really that. Punch back hard. Um, so, in French, if you'll put this one up, Yves François Blanchet on his uh, Twitter feed. Uh, hold on. Actually, you know, I will just bring it up here to get the full tweet. That's not it, is it? Why is it, why know. does that do I'll that? I'll let you work on that in the background while we we try and I literally, it literally says show more. Yeah, I know. It's, Twitter does its own thing. Well, X does its own thing. It's, it's 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 all over the map and it has been since since Lonnie Boy took her over and I don't think it's going to improve anytime soon. I, it's you know, I keep reading about people who keep saying they're going to to quit and I'm saying, well, you know, there's that eventuality is certainly on the table. I haven't committed okay. to quitting anytime soon. I'm waiting to see where it goes and if it gets better or if yeah. it gets worse. Uh, I know what happened. That one was on my personal account where Blanchet has me blocked because right. yes, yeah. after the incident where he basically said that me, skin color, was looking to have mm -hmm. called him on it. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, But here, there we go. Je veux bien le dire avec sérénité et moi l'appeler Monsieur Polièvre, savoir vivre, mais il y a là, en une minute, un chapelet de mensonges grossi sur les armes de chasse, le maintien au pouvoir, la voiture, le reste est de, le, de la très vulgaire déformation, ce gars n'a aucun respect pour la vérité, pour rien du tout et ça va le rattraper, j'en fais mon affaire, de toute façon les Québécois sont bien conscients qu'ils ne parlent pas et ne parlera jamais pour nous. So, it's a bit of the quote that I mentioned before, but it has a little stuff at the beginning. It says, I want to say it clearly with serenity, and I will call him Monsieur Poliev because I have interpersonal skills. The savoir vivre is I know how to act in public, mm -hmm. essentially. I know how to behave. But there is there in one minute a rosary of lies, gross lies on firearms for hunting, 
on maintaining power on vehicles, such as electric vehicles, I'm guessing in this case. The rest is very vulgar disinformation. This man has no respect for the truth, for anything at all, and it's going to catch up with him. I'm going to make it my business. In any case, the Quebecois are very aware that he does not speak and will never speak for us. Mm -hmm. He is not having it. He's not having it. So when I have a feeling that when an election campaign comes, that what's going to happen is that Blanchet is essentially going to be tenderizing Poliev for the next two years, particularly in Quebec, but if any English media decides that it is going to keep up uh, coverage of him, which, you know, usually disappears, uh, but comes back during the elections. Um, but if they maintain, if Blanchet keeps on making statements like this that do get carried in the English media, and Blanchet is making other things, right? Like he's complaining how, you know, we're starting to have two Quebecs, the Quebec that's in Montreal, which is, you know, more cosmopolitan than the Quebec elsewhere. And, you know, he's kind of finding that very sad that they can't all seem to be together. But I mean, you know, then again, you have the premier of Quebec attacking universities that deliver mm -hmm. programs in English. Yeah. So it's it's a tit for tat thing, right? It's, it's a tit for tat thing. It's not only coming from one end, right? No, Everybody's no. or you know, Bill ninety six, Bill twenty one, nobody's all those types of things, right? Yeah, so I mean, all parties are guilty. Everybody's stirring that pot. So you know, don't be surprised that you're finding two Quebecs when you keep on pressing the ethno nationalist button, right? And Montreal is an international cosmopolitan city. It's a reputation that Montreal, particularly starting from La Révolution Tranquille, tried to gain for itself. Mm -hmm. We're not a backwater nation, even though we might want to separate. We're not, we are open to the world. It's not about being anti-Anglophone. It's about being pro-Francophone and all that kind of stuff. Well, it's almost like Montreal has been too successful at becoming an internationally recognized cosmopolitan city. Now they'll go, whoa, 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 whoa. There's not enough French going on here. Well, if the language, I'm not going to say that's most spoken, but that it's the most prevalent in the most greatest, greatest number of countries is English, and you want to be an international player on the world scene, so you have the largest city in your province and what you aspire to be a future nation that has a good amount of English in it. Mm -hmm can't have both at the same time no right it comes if you want to be an international player on the international scene that's going to happen you're going to have to deal with it in other ways but when it comes to this if the anglophone media throughout canada starts carrying a little more blanchette what we're going to have is this guy essentially tenderizing polyev for the next 20 or so months so that hopefully someone else can deliver the final blows. And based on what we've seen from the NDP with what it's doing on promoting dental care and what it has been doing the other day on housing, actually lying about yeah, that's housing good. projects that are have 80% of the units at below market rates and the projects that are led by indigenous people being described as luxury condos for rich buddies. It doesn't look like the nation is going to be able to depend on the NDP. No, and, and I read... And deliver uh, some body blows there. I read an article yesterday that uh, uh, re resent me. Let's see if I, I got it up here. Let me just pull it up here for you. So for a lot of people, because I know that the Black Québécois does not make the unanimity, unanimity in the country, and there's a lot of people that feel it doesn't even deserve to be a federal party and all that kind of stuff, and, you know, when we do the civics piece, we keep on telling you. It's like, it's not how many seats that you run in that decides whether you're a federal party or not. It's whether or not you're running in a federal election and registered with Elections Canada versus Elections Quebec or Elections Manitoba. That's the other, there, there are no rules. 
in that sense, to become a federal party. If you're running in a federal election, you're a federal party, just like the Communist Party of Canada is a federal party. Mm -hmm. And even if it got one person elected, it would be enough. And even if it only ran in one riding, mm -hmm. because it had a lot of communists in that riding and got elected in one seat, it would still be a federal party. Th that's the only criteria. That's it. Yeah. That's it. That's, that's the way our civics work. So w regardless of the legitimacy, yeah, well, I yeah. remember the Black Quebecois one election in our history did vote enough people in to be the official, official opposition. opposition. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and I remember when when uh, and it did a good job. Who, objectively, uh, it was uh, Lucien Bouchard who was the uh, party leader at the time. Correct me if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. And they did a skit on uh, Air Force. I think it was Air Force. Yes, it was Air Force. And the guy was dressed up as, as Lucien Bouchard, and they were interviewing him. And in the interview, uh, he's talking, he says, well, um, you know, uh, now that I'm the official opposition leader, I have to do my best to keep the country together. And all of a sudden, there's like an earthquake. And he goes, what was that? He goes, uh, that's René Lévesque rolling over in his grave. <laughs> <laughs> but he, he did another bit. He goes... Uh, you look at uh, what's going on there with the royal family. Prince Charles, separated. Prince Andrew, separated. Prince Margaret, separate. <laughs> <He goes, laughs> Quebec should separate and we'll just be like the royal family. Là. Actually, I'm doing the French accent, but Lucien Bouchard did not have a thick French accent like that. No, he didn't. No, no not, not at, all. at all. No. Yeah. So it's just you had habit. something you wanted to show? Yes. Well, here, here's an article that uh, Rhee sent me. It says, um, most Canadians who plan to vote Liberal are doing so to stop Conservatives from winning yes. in a poll. And here's the, you know who the poll is from? This is interesting. The man that has really been torpedoing his own company as of late, Angus yep. Reid. Um, the the nonprofit Angus Reid Institute conducted an online survey from January 16th and 17th among a representative randomized sample of 1,620 Canadian adults. The margin of error, or plus or minus two percentage point, 19 times out of 20. The survey was self commissioned and paid for by the institute. Well, there certainly is a significant amount of distaste for Trudeau among Canadians. Hang on a second. I'm trying to find the right tab here. No, oh, that's not it. There we are. I'll bring it over here so it's a little bit easier to read. Well, there certainly is a certain, a significant amount of distaste for Trudeau among the Canadian public. That does not appear to be the strongest motivating factor for those who intend to vote for the Conservative Party. Instead, three in five, 62% Conservative voters, said they are more likely to vote because they back Conservative leader Pierre Polyev and the party's vision rather than wanting to prevent another term of government led by Justin Trudeau. These voters make up a quarter of the electorate overall. Meanwhile, three in five, 63% liberal supporters said they are more motivated to prevent a conservative government rather than to support Trudeau and liberal policies. This means just 9% of the Canadian electorate is passionate about and inspired by the prospect of voting liberal, Angus Reid wrote in the report. So I think that's kind of interesting. And, and oftentimes that's how elections go in this country. You're not voting in somebody new, you're voting somebody out. And in this case, I think a lot of people are voting to keep a guy out. So if they vote liberal to keep Polyev out, I don't honestly have a problem with that at mm -hmm. all. Because here, Pierre you... Polyev is dangerous to democracy in this country. He's a dangerous yeah. individual. And if you go further down in the article, it says uh, when they're talking about strategic voting, more than one third, 36% of NDP supporters said they would likely switch their vote to liberals and three in 10 said they would consider that option. Others said it's unlikely, 19% are not going to happen, 15%. So 34% said like unlikely or not going to happen, but 66% are willing to consider it, 36% saying that they absolutely would. It would be catastrophic loss of support for NDP leader Jagmeet Singh, which certainly wouldn't be a bad thing because that party needs to clean frickin' house. It does. I, I like very him. hard. Bring out the brooms. Very hard. I think he's a good man, but he's, he's really not a federal politician. No, he's lost his way. He's he's playing schoolyard politics here. Yep. Look what we did. We did it on our own. No, you didn't. You don't have the, the seats. You can't do it on your own. Yeah, no, that's a lie, and you know it. He's not. He's not in the game that way. He's well, and every step. time he complains about a provincial matter, he'd be a good municipal councillor. Mm -hmm. 
Well, it's like I said, he constantly complains about uh, minis- uh, sorry, uh, provincial matters as if it's a federal issue. Yeah. Justin it's Trudeau like, is responsible. No, he's not. Yeah, he's just not in the level of politics that are suitable for his personality and his character. No. From he occasionally looks like a statesman, occasionally. Not occasionally. often enough, unfortunately. Yeah. Because which you need when you're a good mayor to keep the city together. Those mm-hmm. things when he's talking about like different population groups and whatnot and getting together, like he did, like, you know, with, you know, young men to have been discriminated against because of the color of their skin when he made that wonderful speech. Yes. That we were inspired by it, right, rightfully so. It was the right thing that needed to be said at that, that right time. But it's the type of stuff that mayors say, like, for example, with mm-hmm. what's going on with Israel and Palestine right now and there are protests in the streets. It's like, you know, I have to be the mayor for all the citizens. He'd probably be a good mayor. Mm-hmm. Yes, I think so. He's not a good party leader and he's not a good federal politician. From the would-be Bloc Québécois, voters who want to stop the Tories, 35% said the switch is possible or likely to happen. So the Liberals, when you put that all together, that would put their vote intentions at 34% rather than 26, 27, as the polls are showing right about now. Mm. Now, if you're comparing that to the 41 that the conservatives allegedly have at this point, it still is below the mark, Mm -hmm. but it shows that as we keep on saying right now, about two years out when there isn't anything to lose and people are frustrated with the government and, or just frustrated with stuff Mm -hmm. like high prices and inflation and interest rates, which are not the fault of the federal government. But they're frustrated. They got to take it out on somewhere. So blame the government. This is normally the phase that we're in. Mm. Well, because it's the kick the tires phase. Because there's no consequence at the moment. It, it's going to be interesting in the next federal election to see if Pierre Polyev loses his seat. Well, Bruce Fanjoy is really helping. This is, he's, he's working hard. He's knocking on a lot of doors, and he's got a good social media game. He's trying. Well, and, and the thing is, if you're a constituent of Pierre Polyev, you know he's done nothing but oh, yeah. campaign federally for the last two years. Yeah. But the only thing he's done for the writing is talk about that mushroom company. Yeah. That's in his writing. That's it. Not much. So, um, yeah, you've got this stuff going on. So it's not in the bag for him yet. And you know, there's a reason he's working so hard and there's a reason why he keeps on turning up the volume because he knows he does not have it in the bag. All these parties have internal polling. And, you know, mm-hmm. He knows he doesn't have it on the bag. He knows that. And the interesting thing about this is that also is that the conservative people that are voting for him as well are voting for him mostly because they seem to believe in his policies and is not necessarily out of an I hate Trudeau thing. So this whole I hate Trudeau thing that's being portrayed as like the whole nation doesn't like you, just, you know, doesn't like your leadership, why not? It's not actually a thing mm-hmm. according to this poll. Well, and, and, and let's, let's, let's call out Polyev for being the shit given that he is, which is not difficult to do. But when he continually blames Justin Trudeau for all of the ills in the world, 95% of the stuff he blames, maybe even 98% of the stuff he blames them for, he has nothing to do with. Inflation is global. It's not just in Canada. Our inflation is lower than most of the rest of the world. Our GDP is doing better. We're paying down the debt. Why did we borrow money during the pandemic? Oh, I don't know, to keep people alive? All of that gets left out. And then he blames Trudeau for housing and he blames Trudeau for municipal affairs. It's like in Justin Trudeau's Canada, uh, protesters on the streets of Toronto are calling out. I'm like, okay, then talk to Olivia Chow and then Doug Ford because they're the two responsible for that. But no, 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 no. He's got to blame Justin Trudeau for everything. I'm hoping that most Canadians are intelligent enough to see through that line of bullshit. But I yeah. don't know. I don't know. And, and I, I, I really am genuinely worried that he might get through to enough people to possibly form government. And if that happens... You can kiss our democracy goodbye because he will 
unlike Stephen Harper, who was the king of incrementalism, Skippy will go for the throat on everything right away. Yep. You know it. Look what Daniel Smith has done in Alberta. Look what Doug Ford is trying to do in Ontario and is succeeding in some areas. Thankfully, we're fighting and pushing back. And we'll have to continue to do it as we find out he lies and gets caught in his lies. And we have proof that he's lied. Yes, those emails. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but his emails. But his emails. Yes. Uh, how are we doing for time, Mr. Grizzly? We're going to have to wrap up shortly. Okay. Um, so there's lots of things. Again, um, there's also the announcement that came on uh, capping uh, international students uh, going to quote unquote sort of fly by night colleges. But we'll, we'll, I got notes on mm -hmm. that. We'll talk more about that tomorrow. It's not that I haven't forgotten this. It's just yeah, that, I've, I've this, got this event. Yeah, I've got um, some stuff on that too as well. The, yeah, uh, this event was a big deal. But uh, talk about the, uh, the malaria vaccine very quickly. Um, Cameroon is becoming the first country to launch a national campaign of vaccination. This, the first child has already received it. And uh, like I said, it's a new va vaccine to fight malaria that has been invented. It's expected to save tens of thousands of lives. A lady named Marie-Ange Sourokakuyao from Gavi, the Vaccine Alliance, says, uh, and the Gavi is an organization, if you, you might remember it from the pandemic, that helps low-income countries fund mm -hmm. vaccination programs. So that whole sort of like fund, fund or bank that we were putting all those vaccine doses in, because Gavi was a, a part of that during the, the COVID, uh, the worst of the COVID outbreak. Um, the vaccine rollout means, she says, the vaccine rollout means the world where children no longer die from a simple mosquito bite is within our reach. Now, there was a pilot project that delivered millions of doses to children all over in Africa, and they've noticed a dramatic drop in severe infections and a 13% drop in deaths among eligible children. Malaria takes out over hundreds of thousands of people a year, most of them children under five who die. And malaria is rising throughout the world. The rates are rising due to climate change, the rise in temperatures, rise in humidity, and rise in rainfall, mm -hmm. which are perfect for mosquitoes, yes. For mosquitoes and for the spread of malaria. According to the World Health Organization, there were about 250 million cases of malaria throughout the world in 2022, which was wow. 5 million more than the year before. The vaccine sequence is um, a bit onerous. It requires four shots. Mm. People were upset with just two with COVID. So the full malaria sequence is four shots. About 20 countries in uh, Africa are planning to start a campaign. That should be coming soon. There's also going to be soon be a second vaccine on the market very soon as well. So there will be competition. And uh, that's working well for kids, but there's still a need for a vaccine for adults, including pregnant women. And... Uh, we're not hearing a lot of cases of it in Canada yet, but there have been some cases of malaria popping up in the south, south of the United States last year. So it is coming. It is a, these tropical illnesses that exist elsewhere in the world for which, you know, the world hasn't bothered to develop vaccines or treatments really because it happened over there to people over there who, you know, mm -hmm. we don't really care about those diseases are coming here eventually. So uh, I have the feeling that the world of science and pharmaceuticals are all of a sudden going to be a whole lot more interested in finding cures and solutions and treatments to these illnesses well, where they went before. When we talk about vaccinations and we've got people who are anti-vaccine, I know that uh, because, and it all started largely with a former playmate <sighs> did you know that Cuba has developed uh, a cancer vaccine? Oh, I did not know that. Yeah, I'll put, uh, I'm going to put a link to the chat here. Uh, it explains it. There's several, uh, there's hundreds of pages of information on this. National Institute of Health. Uh, and, uh, there's a Wikipedia page. There's Cymovax lung cancer vaccine from Roswell Park Comprehensive Cancer Center. Um, it's, there's all kinds of information about it. It's it's been in develop for, been in development for a number of years. Uh, and did you know that uh, Cuba also developed a uh, meningitis B vaccine? So, you know, it, Cuba's got its issues, of course, but their healthcare is second to none. Mm -hmm. 
Indeed, indeed. And uh, just what I was talking about malaria in the United States, there's always been malaria in the United States from people having traveled. Yes. But last year, between May and August 2023, it was the first time in 20 years that there were locally acquired malaria cases. Only nine. It was the first time in 20 years. Not acquired because somebody traveled somewhere and brought it back. This, it's this coming. Is, this is interesting. The Cuba has a long history of vaccine development, including the meningitis B vaccine and the therapeutic lung cancer vaccine. It's a vaccine developed by the Finley Vaccine Institute in Havana, Cuba. The Cuban vaccine is unique in that it is a protein uh, subunit vaccine, unlike the MN mRNA vaccines developed by Pfizer and Moderna. Protein subunit vaccines are a small piece of the virus, in this case, the spike protein SARS-CoV-2, to stimulate an immune response. One of the advantages of the Cuban vaccine is its affordability. In addition, the vaccine's ability to be stored at normal refrigerator temperatures makes it easier to distribute and administer in countries with limited resources. I wonder how many people who are anti-vaccine might get the Cuban anti-cancer vaccine. And then they have the lung cancer vaccine as well, right? So mm. the, 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 I'm not getting that COVID vaccine. I don't know what's in it. You're going to get the lung cancer one? Oh, yeah, I'll get that. <laughs> you know that. You know that's going to happen. You know, you know it's probably already happened. Yep. Yep, indeed. 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 And because we're talking about vaccines, we'll probably have to go back to, to, to um, YouTube and say we're not saying... Every time we bring up the subject of vaccines, somebody flags yes. us as saying we're saying we're anti and we're not. We are YouTube. Pro if you like, again, look us. We're talking about Gavi, internationally recognized, the Vaccine Alliance and the yes. Finley Institute. Reputable get, sources. Get the shots. That's what we're saying. Yes, get your shots. Again, <laughs> you don't believe? You think vaccines don't work? Go to a cemetery from a hundred years ago and look at all the dead children. Go to a cemetery from, oh, I don't know, 30 years ago. You'll see a stark difference. Yep, indeed. A couple of quick hits before we go. Um, if you're living in Vancouver, uh, there's a two-day transit strike that kind of hit. 180 supervisors from the Coast and Mountain Bus Company uh, walked off the job at around 3 a.m. This affects bus routes in Metro Vancouver and the sea bus connecting downtown to North Vancouver. Uh, the QP uh, says that they have had no contracts since October 2022. Oh, That's wow. a long time. They're looking for a 20 to 25 percent wage increase over three years, just to bring them in line with what other supervisors in the region earn. So, and it looks like the strike might expand because the union has filed a grievance with the labor board. And in Saskatchewan, the Saskatchewan Teachers Federation has launched a second one-day strike because after six months of negotiation with the province, they have reached a stalemate. And it seems that, according to them, the province is refusing to negotiate on class sizes. All right. That's the end of this episode of the Daily Beaver Morning Show. We hope that you love listening to us because we love making this for you. Remember that sharing is caring, so please tell your peeps and poops all about us. Your word of mouth is priceless, and we really do appreciate it, so thank you very much. And if you do not want to miss an episode of the Daily Beaver Morning Show, well, you don't have to. Thanks to the Fabulous, the feisty, the fierce, the Ray Girl. The Ray Girl. Da, 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 da. Oh, and by superhero. the way, Ray Girl, if you want, you know, I'll, do a, I'll do a voicemail greeting for you if you like. Hi, you've reached the Ray Girl. Leave a message. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and clip that and use it if you want. <laughs> so if you scan that QR code that's under my fuzzy chin right there, well, that will bring you to our pod page podpage.com slash the true north eager beaver lowercase letters with a hyphen between each one of those words and that way when we have something fresh off the bandwidth we just slip it right into your box I'm leave and <laughs> i love that face I, I think i do it just to get that face from yes, you do because you never know what day i'm gonna do it no you I know don't. it's gonna come some point there's no script here folks no script and if you would like to support us in other ways, well then, um, apparently the kids have been talking about press the lick button 
on <laughs> our true north eager beaver. Oh, lick. I get it. Hate. Like the, the, <laughs> what was the name of the band that their that they, their first album came out and it was called Like My Tractor and it was a, a drawing by his nephew who was like four years old and it was a drawing of a tractor and he wrote Like My Tractor but it was L I K so everybody thought it was Like oh, My Tractor. The Waltons. The Waltons. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, you I remember just, that, I, right? Yeah, I, I actually have it. Uh, I could share screen that. I actually was able to oh. bring it up. Cool. I'm gonna lick my tractor. There we go. Right. Lick. Oh, you'll have to scroll down a bit. No, oh, yeah, I could do that. There we go. Lick my tractor. It's like my tractor. <laughs> this is his nephew. And I love how he spelled tractor. T-R-A-K-T-E-R. It actually, that's how it sounds. He phonetically spelled it. He like did. my tractor. Lick my tractor. So... If you want to go to the True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated YouTube page and press the lick, sure, and subscribe, I guess, or sub subscribe buttons. There you go. <laughs> lick, sure, and subscribe. <laughs> that would make us very happy. Also, if you want to make us happy, the QR code that just disappeared, but that was by Mr. Grizzly's head, will bring you to our coffee page. So you might have to back it up a little bit to scan that. But, oh, the look at him he's so helpful well i have another one here I was this is share. why i love him i have another one here i was going to share but this is self-serving this is this is for my asmr ah yeah, good have, you've made yourself one yeah I have a scan that page for my scan ASMR. that one so scan the one asmr too yes in case you need to chat to someone but for our coffee page if you put that back up there because that's the one we're uh, shaking it for right now that's coffee ko hyphen fi dot com slash eager beaver lowercase letters all in one word and if you make a little contribution to the eager beaver high emergency hydration fund well not only will you make us very happy and earn our undying gratitude but you will also get a shout out on the show exactly so, hey it's a good deal all around i think so <laughs> all right from the beaver lodge this is your eager beaver saying it could be a tough world out there kids so please be kind too and gentle with yourselves and if you have a little kindness left over uh, share some mr grizzly, uh, blah, mr grizzly do you have some words of wisdom please yeah i'm going to stick on the same topic i've kind of been revisiting frequently and that's um because it's top of mind for me, you know, and, and and I do stress it as often as possible. It's 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 reach out to your your friends and loved ones who you know that battle mental health issues. You don't have to talk about the mental health issue that they suffer from or battle or or their condition, but just reach out to them, to ask them, hey, okay, you want to go for coffee? Do you want to just sit and watch TV? We don't even have to talk. Sometimes all you need is just company. The last thing you want to talk about is what's in your brain. Well, for me anyway, some people like to talk about it. And in my case, I'm willing to talk about it after I've gone through it because when I'm in the middle of it, it's really dark. And that darkness, I don't like to express because if I did, sometimes it would freak people out. I can't control the thoughts. That's what depression does. It puts dark thoughts in your head. So reach out to your friends and loved ones who you know have depression and you know, if you see somebody behaving oddly, if their mood is shifted, if they are short-tempered, if they seem to be angry all the time and tired, there's a good chance they may have undiagnosed depression. So reach out to them. Don't talk depression. Just say, hey, what, what's going on? How are you? Is everything okay? You, you, you know, lately you seem to be really tired and maybe a little angry. Only you know how to discuss that with with somebody in your life. I can't tell you how to talk to somebody about that, but please reach out. People really need it, especially at this time of the year. Mm. You have Mishadika in the comments here going, Douglas and Paul, if Mohan's family wasn't so big, I would totally make you both next of kin for Mateo if something ever happened to us. I can only speak for myself, but put me on that list because even if I'm 548th on it, like if we have a King Ralph situation that happens, hmm. <laughs> I'm your guy. I'm your beaver. <laughs> well, I can barely support myself, so I don't know how I'm going to support a child. But yeah, sure, you can, you can put me on. <laughs> All right, Mr. Grizzly, roll them credits. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, the Misfee Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, 
fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community, and the Peppermaster. Hot pepper sauces made from farm fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. We are grateful to the Cryer Media Network for its support, Pete Jarvis for our artwork, and Paul Joseph Something for our opening and closing sequence music. I forgot the democracy is something that you do moment. Mm, well, it go is. to www.hamiltonhelps.com and sign that petition to get uh, everyone to open those armories. Very, very, very important. All right, kids and cubs. Uh, if you are a, a political junkie on the United States uh, side, tonight is the New Hampshire primary, so you'll probably want to watch that. Yeah. And uh, you got the Canty Corporate just here going, hey, am I the only one who refers to these guys as the fabulous Beaver Boys? Well, get me a piano so I can spread out and do my best Michelle Pfeiffer. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> putting a link here in the chat. I wanted to show this video, but it's six minutes and 11 seconds. I don't really, we don't really have the time for it, but it is... Um, from the Financial Times, it says, can people be fooled into thinking authoritarianism is better than democracy? Here's what award-winning novelist Margaret Atwood has to say. It's worth a watch. It's in the chat. Give it a look. Mm -hmm. And uh, an RIP to Canadian film director Norman, Norman oh, Jewison, yeah. a director of many, many important movies, such as In the Heat of the Night, which uh, won five Oscars, Moonstruck, Fiddler on the Roof, Jesus Christ Superstar, uh, The Hurricane, um, the hurricane is a great film. Yeah, he founded the Canadian Film Centre in the late 1980s, came back home to help the other film uh, Canadian directors get into the business, won the 1999 Irving Jean Thalbrook Memorial Award Oscar and the 2010 Lifetime Achievement Award for the Director Guild, Directors Guild of America, uh, a Canadian that has made us proud for many, 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 many years. Our deepest condolences to his family and all those who loved, loved him, worked with him, cared for him. Well, and, and my favorite line delivered from a movie, movie ever was from The Heat of the Night from Sir Sidney mm. Poitier. What do they call you up there, New York boy? They call me Mr. Tibbs. Badass as ever. Mm. Love it.